بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد القرآن اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون that uh, people's reckonings are drawing near and yet people are in heedlessness uh, not thinking about that يقترب للناس حسابهم يوم الحساب يوم القيامة the day of judgment الله سبحانه وتعالى described the state of these people is that they're وهم في غفلة غفلة is a word in Arabic it has a lot of different meanings but generally whenever you have a word that begins with غين it has to do with some kind of covering or something being hidden something being veiled like غابة and غفرة to cover over and so the, the, the basic meaning of it is that people are in a state of heedlessness. Ghafla, the ghafil is, is heedless. Mughafal is a simpleton, a fool. Somebody that can be easily tricked is mughafal. Somebody that other people can uh, fool them is a simpleton. So the idea that people are in a state of ghafla is a, a very strong Quranic idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَعْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ We have prepared for the hell many multitudes of the jinn, unseen creatures, and the ins, human beings. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have intellects. Here the word qalb means intellect. They have intellects, but they don't use them. They don't, they don't understand with their intellects. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا لهم أعين. They have eyes. لا يبصرون بها. But they don't see with their eyes. They don't see with their eyes. لهم قلوب لا يفقهون بها. لهم أعين لا يبصرون بها. ولهم آذان. And they have ears. لا يسمعون بها. But they don't hear. أولئك كالأنعام. Those people are like dumb beasts. Like cattle and sheep. But then the Quran says, Bel hum adal. No. And this is a rhetorical istidrak. In Arabic, bel is used to clarify something if you made a mistake or said something that wasn't clear. Here it's used rhetorically. They're like animals. No. Bel hum adal. Why? Ula'ika hum al ghafilun. Because they're in a state of heedlessness. Now, if you look at the animal kingdom, you will not find animals in a state of heedlessness. Animals, no matter what they're doing, are always in a state of awareness. If you watch an animal eating even a dog, it'll immediately sense if somebody comes near it. If you watch a rabbit eating, rabbits move their ears around. Why? Because they're worried. There's something that threatens them. There's some danger. Most animals have very sensitive ears and eyes. If you watch rats or mice, if you watch a mouse come out of a hole, a mouse doesn't just saunder out of the hole. The mouse comes out slow. It moves its head around. The same with the lizard. If you watch a lizard come out of its hole, a lot can be learned from animals. That's why Allah uses them as metaphors in the Quran. If you watch a, a lizard come out of a hole, a lizard like this. The Arabs say, Ahyaru min dab, more bewildered than the lizard, because the lizard looks like he's bewildered. What he's really doing is he's checking, is there any danger out there? Animals are constantly aware of danger. They're always aware of danger. Why? Because their, their existence is threatened. And that awareness, if they're not aware, they're endangering themselves. They're endangering their pride if they're lions, or their flock if they're sheep. 
That's why in, in, the, in the dumbest of animals, you have that we domesticate, not animals in nature. Animals that are domesticated need a shepherd. Because they've, humans have domesticated them, they feel safe. They're in fences. They, their food is there, they don't have to forage for it, so they start feeling safe. So then you bring in the rai. But if you go out in nature, animal fish are constantly, watch a fish, they turn all at the same time if they sense anything. Fish are constantly aware because like the Arabs say, al-hut yabla hut. One fish, big fish eat little fish. So fish are always aware. There's a lot of animals that have, uh, they, they'll only come out of their shell like a turtle. It'll come out of the shell. If it senses any danger, it goes back into the shell. There's animals that, that's their hole, the same thing. They'll run back to their hole. The jarbua has two, one, one there, it checks. If it's safe, it'll go out. If it's not, it goes out the other one. It's called a nafqa, which is where the Arabs get munafiq from, because that's where hypocrites are. Always have exits, exit strategy. But that's why Allah says that these people are more astray than animals, because animals are not in a state of heedlessness about the, the danger that is threatening them. But humans are in heedlessness. They, they lie around. An animal, if they sense fire, they immediately run. You watch any animal. You put fire near an animal and they flee. What do people do? They see a fire, they say, let's go check the fire out. They're curious. Because this is the type of heedlessness. Man is, is so clever, his cleverness kills him. This is the state of human beings. But Allah warns of that state. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of the cities, Do people feel safe in these cities that our harm won't come in the nighttime while they're sleeping? Do people feel safe during the daytime that our harm won't come to them and they're playing? Why does Allah use play? He doesn't say, they're working. Because if you have no purpose in your life, in what you're doing, then you're playing. That's what lu'ab is. It's, it's an activity that has no purpose other than entertainment. That's, that's what games are. They're simply to entertain people. And so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about people. They're in a state of heedlessness. Do they feel safe from the design of God? Only, the only people that feel safe from the, the design of God, who are they? Al-Qawm al-Khasirun, the losers. The losers. Inna insana wal asri inna insana la fi khusr. Same word. Qawm al-Khasirun. Surely by time, by the passage of time, men, humanity is in a state of loss. You're losing time. Your time is running out. You've got a clock on your, on your uh, hand that'll tell you 12 hours. You also have a clock that Allah has designed. It's an internal clock. It's got 50 years, 75 years, 40 years, 30 years, and that clock comes to an end. That's it. The, you, 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 don't get, you don't get a battery recharged. If your clock breaks down here, you go and get it fixed. No, it's over. And then people, what do they say? Let me go back, I'll do good. That's what people say. That's the state of people. It's a state of heedlessness. People are walking around daydreaming. They're completely unaware. I was taking my children across the street yesterday. Uh, at, it was uh, at night, and, and they had ridden somewhere. I rode with them. And, and I said, look, when you go across the street, you have to be completely aware because these people are sleeping. <laughs> They're driving around, in a, they're daydreaming. People are on automatic pilot. And just to prove my point, as I stepped off the curve, and I had the right of way, and the pedestrian things had a sign saying, you know, walk, 10, 9, 7, 6, 8. And a car swerved, almost hit me, coming around. And this lady looks at me, and like she, she didn't even see me. Just to prove the point. You know, that could have been it for me. 
But that's the state people are in. They're in a complete state of heedlessness. When you're driving out there, driving is ibadah. Because you have a, a weapon of mass destruction. Behind you. That's what you've got there. That's a weapon of mass destruction. And you don't give weapons of mass destruction to idiots. A car can kill large numbers of people. You can, you can kill 50 people on the freeway. That, that's a, we had 30 people die, 33 people died in Virginia. It's a national catastrophe. You know how many people died yesterday on, in automobile accidents? But people don't think of that. But, but it's the same type of heedlessness. That's what people are in. They're in a state of ghafla, and that is what the Quran is warning about. Don't be in that state. Don't be in that state. Don't be worse than animals, because animals aren't in that state. Animals are thinking about danger. Danger. They're aware of their enemies. We're not aware of our enemies. Nafs, shaitan, hawa, and dunya. Those are the enemies of man. Nafs, shaitan, hawa, and dunya. Just like every animal out there has natural enemies that it's worried about constantly. It's vigilant about. Why? Because it doesn't want to lose its life. And humans should be conscious of losing their eternal life. That's, that's, that's what we're here for. We're here to prepare. If you look, Imam Raghab al-Isbahani says that Allah has given us three powers, quwa, that he put in the human being. The first quwa is called uh, shahawiya, which is a, a, a power that we share with animals. It's called appetitive, and it's part of our animal nature because the human is haywan. But he's hayawan nataq, like the Arabs say, a, an articulate or a rational animal. But that power, the ability to, to uh, this power of appetite is a, is a healthy thing when it's kept in check. And that's the, the, the mashrab, the ma'kal, and the mankah. Eating, drinking, and procreation. That, 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 that's the shahwa that human beings have given. And then you have the quwwa al ghadabiya which is called the irascible power or faculty that, that God has put into man. And this relates to the emotions. It's why people get angry. And that's put in there for a reason because you should get angry about things that should elicit proper anger. But you should get angry for the right reasons, in the right degree, at the right time, and towards the right object. You don't just get angry. There's people now walking around, they're just filled with rage. They're filled with anger. They'll get angry at the slightest thing. Because that's their state. That's the hal that they're in. Because the, the irascible self has overwhelmed them. Just like there's people now just looking for, there's people, 40 million downloads of porn, pornography in this country every day. 40 million. The highest pornographic downloading going on per capita are in Muslim countries. You can look at the Google, uh, you can look at the Google research on it. And I'm reading a book on this subject right now, I can't even believe it, what's going on out there. Because people are complete slaves of their selves. They're com and that's total heedlessness. You couldn't do something like that unless you were in a complete state of heedlessness. That's what it is. It's total heedlessness. And now, shaitan has vehicles has, has their, their, their machines and technology that can completely destroy a human being. Completely. You'll, you'll put out your inner eye, blind it. It's like, it's like taking a, you know, the, uh, the, the scholars of this science say that the inner eye is more sensitive than the outer eye, the spiritual eye. is more sensitive than the outer eye. Just like when you get a little speck of sand in your eye, you can't see, you just want to clear your eyes. Anything that you're looking at, that is haram. That's what it's doing to your inner eye, but worse. It's like stabbing it. It's like stabbing it. And that's what people are doing. That's what there is. It's all heedlessness. That's why Imam al-Junaid said that the real root cause of all sin, crime, evil in the world is ghafla. That's what he said. That is the root crime. Human beings are sleepwalkers in, this, in somnambulant states. Not aware that, that the time is coming. We're going to have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ The reckoning is drawing near. And people are in heedlessness. They're not thinking about it. 
The Prophet ﷺ was thinking about it constantly. Take yourself to account before you're taken to account. Consider yourselves already in the grave. That's a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Consider yourselves already in the grave. Be prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's real. It's real. I mean, those are hadiths. Fire is real. Paradise is real. The day of judgment is real. The hold is, It's all real. This is the illusion. People think they're going to be here forever. There were people a hundred years ago listening to the same ayahs, hearing the same. They're all gone. They're dead. All of them. They're all gone. And here we are, and we're going to be gone, and these young people, they'll be sitting here with the same problems, the same stupidities, the same miserliness, greed, envy, backbiting, namima, all the same diseases. And that's why in, in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, when he said, Safiru taghnamu, set out on the journey and reap the rewards. Raghab Bahani said, don't take this as some kind of outward journey. The Prophet, when he tells you a commandment, because outwardly, merchants, when they go out on a journey, they, they benefit. Like the Arabs say, travel, there's five benefits in traveling. You, you get benefit from travel. But this is a spiritual traveling. Set out on a journey to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says that journey... And finally, I want, before I get to that, the, the third quwa is the quwa anatika. It's the rational soul, the power, the faculty that human beings have that separates them from all other species on this planet, with the exception of the jinn. That faculty is the ability to reason. It's the ability to think. And if that, that faculty is meant to, to, to be in control of the other two faculties, but what's happened is, قلب الحقائق, it's switched over. The horse is riding the man. The donkey is riding you. That's what's happening. It's switched, it's completely uh, backward. Y you can tell people that it takes, y your basal metabolic rate is like 1,600, it'll burn 1,600 calories uh, a day. Right? So you just need that just to survive. I mean, you'll, you'll burn fat or something like that uh, for a certain amount of time, and then the body starts eating itself, then you die. That's what you need. And then, based on your movement, you need something on top of that. 500, 1,000, depending on what people do. Laborers need more. People that use their intellect need more because there's glucose. You have to have uh, caloric intake for thinking. So, but there's people out there eating 4,000 calories a day. Every time they get on the scale, they see it going up. They get diabetes. And then they pray, you know, for a shifa. Allahumma shfini. People eat uh, all that ghee and dalda and, and this, that, and the other. And, and, and then they get, have a triple bypass. Alhamdulillah. No, seriously. If, you, if, you're, if you're sick, people get sick you know, genes, there's a lot of reasons people get sick. But most people make themselves sick. And then they ask God for, God gave you a body. It has legs with muscles. You have a stomach that, that's me meant to digest. It's all meant for, it's all wisdom. But you can understand all of that rationally. Do people exercise? No. The doctor tells them to exercise, they don't exercise. Do people overeat when the ice cream comes? Do they eat it? Yes. Even with diabetes, I've seen people shoot up insulin before they have their dessert. I'm not making that up. Why? Because they can't control themselves. It's as simple as that. People aren't well. But you're human beings. I mean, this, this is Benny Adam. We're, we're not insignificant creatures. We're, we're meant to be, to, to be people of discipline. I mean, that's why Allah has given us this religion, five prayers a day in specific times. The Prophet ﷺ once saw a man who had a, a heavy stomach, and he said that would be better if it was on somebody else. 30,000 children died yesterday of starvation. And, and, all, and probably more or as many died from overeating. Because it's imbalanced. People don't think about other people. They just think about themselves. 
That's ghafla. It's ghafla. It's all greed. It's all ego. It's all me, me, me. That's what's going on out on that freeway out there. Nobody's thinking of the other people. When I grew up, people had courtesy on the road. I remember that clearly. I'm, I'm not making this up. People had courtesy on the road. People would actually stop and let you get in. Now they speed up and, and then flip you off. Seriously, that, because this is a, a complete me culture, that's what's happening. It's the whole planet. We got six billion people. Me, me, me. Six billion people. It makes a wonderful world, doesn't it? That's, that's what Islam is about. They prefer others to themselves. Even if they have needs, they actually prefer others to themselves. Like the two uh, of the Ansar who had a guest and they turned out the lights because they didn't have enough food for themselves. They, they put their children to sleep and then they fed the guest. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah was pleased with, with what you did last night. Because Allah is aware. Those are real people. Those are human beings. It's not all these selfish people out there. It's not all these people filled with that me, me, me attitude. It's human beings. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be human beings. Now, if you, know, if you look what happened in, in Virginia, I mean, there's a lot of, it's a very deep problem. But it's a problem that we need to think about as a society, about where this whole thing is going, where this project is going. You know, internet and and violence that's so graphic, you know, that if you have any sanity at all, you have to feel sick in, 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 in the fact that it's out there. All this graphic violence, video games, all these things. I mean, even the kid is, is imitating a film that he saw. That's what it, you know. But if you look, what happened to him? That's what I'm interested in. What happened to him? I mean, how, how did that get created? You know, humiliated, laughed at because he's Korean made fun of by his go back to China. People don't even know the difference between a Korean and a Chinese person. You know? You know they have very distinct look. And they know, they know each other. But Korean sees another Korean. They know each other. Chinese know each other. It's like Africans. People think blacks all look alike. When I was in Africa, I had to learn all the different. Yoruba, Hausa, Mandink, Fulan. They all look different. And I learned to see. I meet people on the street uh, that are from Africa. I'll say, oh, where are you from, Nigeria? How'd you know? I say, you're Yoruba? How'd you know? They can't even believe an American would even know that there's different kind of black people in the world. But you have to treat people with dignity. That, that's what happened. This man was humiliated since he was a little kid in grade school. And that's what happens, all this bullying. And the Quran prohibits that. It's one of the worst things that you can do is, is sukhriya, is making fun of people, mocking people, humiliating people. The same thing happened in Columbine. You study those two boys that did that in Columbine. The same thing. They were uh, mocked by the jocks of the school, spit on, called faggots. What kind of culture is that? What do we teach our children? in the houses. There's so much abuse out there. If you want to know why people are in the states, they're in, look at the way they're being raised. Look at the way they're being spoken to. Just human respect, human dignity, <laughs> treating people like human beings, welcoming people. This is what humans are supposed to be doing. That, that's what humanity is about. That's what we're here for. We're here to help each other. Work with each other in righteous things. Don't work with each other uh, in harmful things. Allah says, Don't let one people mock another people. And qawm here is nakira. It's an indefinite substantive. Whenever you have a negative before that, it means anybody. It's lil umum, like the usuliyun say. It means anybody. No people should mock another people. Arabs shouldn't mock Americans. Americans shouldn't mock Arabs. People should not mock each other. Because when you mock people, they get angry. Because you're humiliating them. You're making them feel insignificant. You're making them feel like rich people that mock poor people. That was a lot of his diatribe. It was about rich people, their insensitivity. And that happens. We're in a culture where we don't even know there's a whole other culture living alongside this culture that doesn't have anything. Really. People that don't have anything. They, they live with rats and cockroaches. In this culture, we've got... Uh, New Orleans, right now, down there, nothing's been done. We're trying to rebuild Iraq. And a whole city was wiped off the map, and, and still there's people that can't go back to their homes. 
Well, what's happened? And these are questions we have to ask as a culture, as a country. And these are really, really troubling things that people should be deeply troubled by. These things just come and go, and then it's just a media flash, and, and, and everybody gets excited, and then it's over until the next one happens. People don't think about what's going on. What are we teaching our children? There's a book by Dave Grossman, he's a lieutenant colonel, taught the psychology of killing. It's called Stop Teaching Our Children to Kill. He, it's been proven by social sciences that there is a small number of people out there that are going to become violent from all of these violent games that they watch. Yeah, it's small, it doesn't happen to everybody, but if it happens to a small number, that's the whole purpose of Islam. You prohibit things to protect that minority that's going to be endangered by those things, like alcohol. A lot of people, they have their glass of wine every night. The doctors say, no, it's good for your heart. Forget about your liver and your kidneys, but it's good for your heart. <laughs> yeah. but, but what happens, right? There's a whole other group of people. They start drinking that stuff. It destroys their marriages. It destroys their life. It's just like internet pornography. In this book I'm reading, there's so many marriages that have been destroyed. Destroyed. People that get addicted to that don't even want to have an intimate relationship with a real human being. They're just in cyber world. Kind of culture. People have to ask themselves those questions. InshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum. Good. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya qul ya ayuhal ladhina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayuhal nasa taqu rabbukum aladhi kharakukum min nafsin wahida wa kharaka minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalin kathiran wa nisaan wa taqu allah aladhi tasa'aluna bihi wa arham. يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في القرآن وفروا إلى الله الفرار إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى هو الخوف منه سبحانه وتعالى وهو أن يتمسك الإنسان بما أمره الله سبحانه وتعالى من أحكامه ومن شرائعه من دينه ومن سنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذا الفرار كذلك يدل على السفر فالله سبحانه وتعالى أمر الإنسان أن يسافر إليه وهذا السفر هو السفر معنوي الله سبحانه وتعالى كذلك أمرنا بالزاد بهذا السفر فقال وتزودوا في أن خير الزاد التقوى التقوى هو خير الزاد في هذه الرحلة والله سبحانه وتعالى كذلك أمر الإنسان وقال له وجاهدوا في الله حق جهاده فبعدما تعرف الهدف أو المقصد من الحياة وهو الفرار إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم تتزود لهذا هذا السفر وبعد ذلك لابد من المجاهدة في الطريق مع الدابة والدابة هي نفسك التي بين جنبيك هذه الدابة التي تواصل الإنسان إلى ربه فالله سبحانه وتعالى أمر بذلك فالذي فعل ذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى وعده الجنة والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال في حديث يرويه أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه يقول قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يرضى لكم ثلاثا ويكره لكم ثلاثة فيرضى أن تعبدوه ولا تشرك به شيئا وأن تعتصموا بحبل الله ولا تفرقوا ويكره لكم قيل وقال وكثرة السؤال وإضاعة المال فأوصيكم أوصي نفسي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى في السر والعلانية وادعوه إن الله سبحانه وتعالى يستجيب الداعي إذا دعاه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إن الله سبحانه وتعالى أمر عباده وبدأ به بنفسه وثن به بملائكته حيث قال يا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد 
اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحور به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغ به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا وجعل فأرنا على من ظلمنا ونصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا غاية رغبتنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم بارك في هذا المشهد وفي الحاضرين والغائبين اللهم من مات عندنا في هذا اليوم فاغفره ورحمه وتوب علي يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم سلمنا إلى أهالينا سالمين غانمين يا رحم الرحيمين وجعلنا من الفائزين يوم الدين يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم أيقظنا من الغفلة ومن الاحتقار ومن الافتخار ومن كل صفة تبعدنا عنك يا أرحم الراحمين وطهر قلوبنا وألسناتنا اللهم وحد صفوفنا وألف بين قلوبنا أنت أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين ورحمة الله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه ولا تكفرون واقيموا الصلاة لذكره Celebrating our past, examining our present, providing guidance for our future. Seasons is the semi-annual journal of Zaytuna Institute featuring articles by respected scholars. Order your copy today.